Hello everyone, I'm Steph Haynes and this video is about Osculator, which is the software that I use to turn my Wii Remote into a MIDI controller that I can use with any digital audio workstation. Before we get into this, I just want to say that while this video is meant for Ewe players, I know that the Wii Remote and Osculator can be used in all sorts of creative ways. So even if you aren't an Ewe player, this video might give you the info that you need to incorporate awesome musical motion controls into your setup, whatever that may be. If you are an Ewe player though, Go ahead and make sure that the Wii Remote is securely attached to your instrument. I like to use rubber bands for this, as they don't leave any residue. I like to have the Wii Remote under my left hand so that I can reach all of the buttons easily, but if you have smaller hands or if you just don't like it there, then maybe you can attach it to the bottom of your instrument as well. Be sure that when you do attach the Wii Remote that the elastics don't get in the way of any of the buttons on the front or any of the keys, and also, equally important, make sure that they sit on either side of these octave rollers here so that you still have full use of all of them. It actually fits really nicely. It's almost like these two components were made to be combined. So the nerds among you have probably noticed that I have a Wii Motion Plus. I've used this setup with both an ordinary Wii Remote and this one, and I haven't noticed a difference in performance between the two. I just use this one because it matches my UE5000. The next thing that you're going to need to do is download a program called Osculator. Link in the description. Osculator is essential because, as I said earlier, it takes all of the button push and accelerometer data from the Wii Remote and converts it into MIDI, which is how we're going to get the Wii Remote to talk to Ableton or Mainstage. Once you have Osculator running, make sure that your Wii Remote is connected to your computer with Bluetooth. This can be a little tricky to set up at first, but once you have the Wii Remote paired with your laptop, Osculator should automatically facilitate pairing in the future. The Osculator user manual has some really good instructions for this, so be sure to check that out. So the next step is to assign event types and values to each input, but before we do, let's get on the same page about some terminology here. If you've ever been interested in airplanes, these terms will be super familiar to you, but here's a quick demo for the rest of you. Okay, so let's imagine that the Wii Remote is an airplane real quick. Airplanes move in three basic ways. Pitch, which is when the nose of the airplane angles up or down. Roll, which is when the airplane banks from side to side like this. And yaw, which is when the nose of the airplane changes angle from side to side. So for this setup, we're only going to need to use pitch and roll motions. So go ahead and unselect yaw and excel. After that, find every button on your Wii Remote and press it. When you're done that, your oscillator window should look something like this. Next, we have to give each input an event type. So let's go ahead and select pitch and change the event type to MIDI CC. Now the angle of our Wii Remote is going to be translated into a number between 1 and 127. Next, let's select a value. You can think of this as a channel within our channel. It doesn't really matter what value you pick as long as it doesn't interfere with your other MIDI controllers. You can always revise that later if need be. It looks like I already picked 7, so let's go with that. Now let's repeat the process with roll, using the same event type and choosing 8 for our value. That's it for the motion controls. Next, we have to do all of the buttons. For most of these, we're going to be selecting MIDI CC Toggle, which makes the button act as an on-off switch, which is convenient for controlling virtual devices within Mainstage or Ableton. If you just select MIDI CC instead of MIDI CC Toggle, then your virtual device, like your reverb, your delay, arpeggiator, whatever, will be on only as long as you're pressing down the button, which is not usually what you want. At this point, you may as well pause the video and just copy what you see here on the screen. So after you've double checked to make sure that you haven't missed anything, let's assign a channel to each input. Most MIDI controllers default to channel 1, so I've set mine to channel 3, just to be sure that it doesn't interfere with any other MIDI controllers in my setup, like my Ewe or my LPD-8. So notice that every time I push a button on the Wii Remote, the white box next to the checkbox flashes green. This means that the MIDI data is being sent out of Oscillator and into whatever DAW we're going to use. Notice that pitch and roll are always constantly sending out MIDI data. This is important to note because it might mess us up in the future if we're trying to MIDI map something without unchecking those checkboxes first. Alright, that's the end of part one. In the next video, we're going to learn about how Oscillator works with either Ableton Live or Mainstage. I put links to each video in the description, so find your software of choice and I'll see you in the next installment.